Hello lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube. I am the Malt Activist and today is day six. Yes, day six of eight uh, of the Diageo Special Release 2020 Tasting Kit Saga. Drama. Just to give you a little recap, um, we, we bought this uh, Diageo Special 2020 uh, Release uh, Sample Kit and that had eight whiskeys in it. And we said, okay, we're going to taste each one uh, uh, from start to finish and I'll report back and see uh, whether this uh, whole uh, exercise was worth it or not. And as it turns out, it wasn't. Because we're up to our sixth whiskey and we've had five terrible ones. And, oh no, sorry, we're, uh, we've already tasted five whiskeys. Uh, and we've had four terrible ones, one very good one. Uh, but overall, it's been it's been really, really boring. It's just been so boring. I was going to say, oh, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride. No, it wasn't a roller coaster ride. It was it was like sitting in uh, in one of those inflatable uh, inflatable tubs or rings, inflatable rings uh, in in water, but the water's not going anywhere, and you're just there, and you're just sitting there, and after like eight hours, you're like, this was the worst day of my life. This is, that's exactly how I feel after tasting those five whiskeys from the Diageo Special Release 2020 kit. However, there's one whiskey in there that I was very intrigued by. And the only reason for that is because I have never tasted whiskey from that distillery. And I'm talking about the Pity Vag. 30 years old. To be completely honest, I don't even know how to pronounce this name. Is it Pity Veik? Is it Pity Vech? Pity Vech. That makes more sense, right? Pity Vech. You would, you would expect it to be called Pirivach. If, I'm sorry, I apologize for not knowing the pronunciation of this distillery. Uh, so uh, if you know better than I do, which I'm sure you do, uh, please put it down in the comments below. But for now, we will call it the Pirivach. Make sense? Okay, so this is 30 years old. <sighs> wow. Now, we tried the Dalwini 30 and I had high hopes for it because I was thinking, older spirit and all that blah 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 but as it turns out it was one of the worst ones that i had tried from the kit Ooh. so which brings us to this 30 year old now uh, this distillery doesn't exist it's been demolished it was it was started in 1974 uh, mainly to produce for blends got shut down in 1994 so barely 1920 years worth of worth of operation and then completely demolished in 2002 which means if it were if it was if it stopped working in 93 7 20 yeah okay so this is probably towards the latter half of the distillery's life so this is 30 years old so obviously uh distilled somewhere in the early 90s i would guess now, so far, what I've seen in the special release is um, very, very generic tasting whiskeys. Um, very difficult to discern one from the other, with, of, of course, with the obvious exception of the Lagavulin 12 at cast strength, which, you know, it's one of my favorite whiskeys, so you can't go wrong there. Uh, I have the Talisker 8 that I'm looking forward to. I've had another Talisker 8 before, and it was very nice, so I'm hoping it's kind of like that or at least as good. I'm not looking forward to the Singleton of Dufton. That's the 17 year old I'm sitting over there glaring at me. I've not had good uh, experiences with Singleton. Which brings me to this pity vech. I'm, I am excited, but at the same time, I'm really, really, really scared of being disappointed. So I don't know. I was, you know, I was even thinking, should I just leave this for last and and just leave it for last? But then I was like, no, I want to end on a good note. That's why I've left the Talisker 8 for last and I've brought this out now. So 
Wow. Let's do it. So this is a 30 year old whiskey distilled. Oh, I don't know why I had to do the math. It says right on the label that is distilled in 1989. Yep, there you can see it. Bottled at 50.8% ABV. <sighs> yeah, I can't believe I was, <laughs> I was doing the math. Wow, please be good, please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Okay, before we nose it, let's see what Diageo themselves have to say about this whiskey. Okay, this is the literature I'm referring to. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nose, mellow in feel and slightly drying with no prickle, leaving uh, fruity, oily first impressions. The rich top nose suggests a salad of ripe tropical fruits, pear, papaya, pineapple, and bananas sitting on a green base of fragrant oil or tropical forest foliage. Unusually, a drop of water increases all these aromas. Hmm, let's see. I'll be the judge of that. At natural strength, it's lightly oily and very smooth in texture, mouth filling, and lightly mouth drying. The taste is rich and creamy vanilla sweet overall with some balancing fruit acidity, drying lightly in the finish, easy to enjoy straight at the strength. Water, not too much, makes it smoother and sweeter still. <sighs> okay. Despite the um, lovely copywriting, it, this to me sounds like it's going to just completely blend into the other ones as well. And I hope I'm wrong and I hope I can figure out something that sets it apart. <sighs> Guys, you have no idea how stressed I am. Definitely on the fruity side, on the tropical fruity side, I agree. Papaya, mangoes, pears. Um, I'm going to guess again, uh, some level of bourbon maturation in this mix of first and second fill, if not just second fill, because I'm again getting that minerality, that limestone, that earthiness that is a staple across all these whiskeys. Milk chocolate. Of course, it's vanilla coconut. Quite sweet. Very sweet, sweeter, sweeter than most of the other ones that we've tried. Okay, this is not a bad nose. This is a good nose. Um, there's still Nothing that really, really like sets it apart. And again, I don't find any off notes uh, other than, again, it does smell like a generic whiskey, but it's it's still on the pleasant side. Like I would, I would enjoy nosing this, right? If I'm not being critical and doing a tasting, I'd be like, yeah, this is a good nose. This is a, you know, a very decent nose. Some linseed oil now. I don't think older whiskeys had that sort of soapiness, oiliness, varnish. But in a very small amount, not in a not in an unpleasant way. Shall we do this? It's so stressed right now. Butterscotch, some citrus, toffee, <sighs> that milk chocolate is back, lots of vanillas. Wow. Okay. So I don't think I'm disappointed. I mean, it's, uh, this is a perfectly reasonable whiskey. I think it's 
it's, it's quite decent. Um, it's again, it's not spectacular. Um, you know, but I, I have to put it in context. I mean, this is still, this is still 30 years old and uh, it must be selling for an arm and leg uh, on all these sites or wherever it is you buy your whiskeys from. It's warming, nice warming, but I think again, that's the, that's the ABV. Uh, easy to drink, it's not very high, it's not in its mid to late 50s, it's smack 50.8, I think, yeah. Ah, a little drying now on the finish. And again, that limestone minerality is back. Hmm, what do I think? I'm, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Let's let's try it with a little bit of just a da. That's it. Just that. Just a hint. It's supposed to bring everything out, make it more. Definitely sweeter on the nose. The fruitiness has come out a bit more. The minerality is uh, a lot more as well. Is it a better nose? I think it's uh, I think it's a slightly slightly amped up nose. It's the same nose, just slightly amped up. Milk chocolate. So uh, yeah, so I think that's what's happened. The water's sort of uh, you know given it a bit bit of a boost, uh, which is which is a good thing. Which is which is uh, which is a sign of a of a decent whiskey. So I think the nose improves slightly. Does it become different? No, it doesn't. It just you know, a little more intense, if you like. And if you like that, then it improves. If you don't like that, well, then it doesn't. Let's see what it's like on the palate. Um, it's made it a little unremarkable on the palate, the water. Uh, still nice, not bad. Uh, I preferred without the water. I think I like that bite a bit more. The water... Better on the nose, not so good on the palate. Which is, I think, what the book said. Um, I honestly don't know if I'm being influenced by that, but that's ex that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, okay. Um, I am not going to be disappointed. Uh, I am going to be... I'm going to be reasonably satisfied with the quality of this particular whiskey. Uh, it doesn't suck. That's a massive compliment to to what's been coming out from from that tasting kit. So it doesn't suck. Um, uh, however, uh, let's put it in context, right? This is uh, this is a closed distillery. It was demolished in 2002, so it doesn't exist anymore. There's not, never going to be any more spirit from Pitivac, um, which means it's probably selling for like I don't know quite a few hundreds of pounds uh, and this is not a few hundred pound worth whiskey in my opinion uh, wow so on the one hand I'm happy that I've ticked off uh, a distillery that I hadn't uh, you know tried before which is uh, good so ting ting uh, however you know it's always it's always my hope that when I try a new distillery I I, uh, you know, I discover new flavors and a new drinking experience. And that is almost always the case, you know, because each, each good distillery will have its own, you know, signature uh, on their spirit. But then, you know, you have, you have distilleries like this one that were, you know, that were just built to, to produce generic spirit and, uh, uh, and to uh, and to supply to the blend market, you know, like the Crag and More, like the Mortlock, whatever. Which means that they all produce the same kind of spirit. And I think you'd have to be an absolute genius of a whiskey taster and a whiskey expert to tell the difference between all of these whiskeys. Uh, I certainly can't, and I don't claim to be an expert by any means. So. Here's what I'll leave you with. I'm happy to have tried this whiskey. Um, I'm happy that it didn't 
absolutely suck. Uh, however, I am now uh, of the same opinion uh, that I was before that this box is nothing but a generic parade of uh, mainly characterless whiskeys with no real discerning quality and that you should steer clear of it. Uh, if you want to buy the Lagavulin 12 and you have 150 pounds to spend, sure, go ahead. Uh, I won't begrudge you that money. It is, after all, your money. Yeah, but for everything else in this release, wow, what an absolute collection of, what's the word? Mediocrity. Less than mediocrity. This is, this is, this is someone saying. I can't believe we have to put out a f uh, special release again. I really don't know what the hell to do. And they were like, just do whatever you want, man. Nobody gives a We'll just bottle it and sell it at exorbitant prices because people will look at the number 30 and the number 21 and the number 17 on these bottles and they'll pay for it. And then when they pay for it, they will say, well, I have to like this whiskey because I paid so much money for it. This is not a special release. This should be called the, the, the mundane release. This should be called, this should not have been released. So, So yes, I am uh, uh, not over the moon. I was hoping that maybe I might be over the moon, but then deep inside I knew that I wasn't going to be, and it was that uh, anticipation and the, uh, the foreshadowing of disappointment uh, that I am now sitting with and saying uh, to myself, I told you so. Okay, so, um, don't buy this whiskey, of course not. Um, it's a little floral now. Uh, there are a few independent bottles flying about apparently, um, uh, but I don't know if they're any good. Um, so I don't know, do your own research, I guess. Uh, don't, don't take my word for it. Uh, definitely don't buy this one for sure. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, another, uh, another video bites the dust and ends with a, with a listless, with a listless outro. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what to say anymore. So yes, there you have it. And, uh, you know what? I'm just really, really looking forward to putting an end to this series because it's not good for your soul, man. To be like disappointed like on a daily basis. Whoa. Maybe I'll give it a break or maybe I'll just do like two more and I'll just get it over with it. Nobody will care. Just like nobody cared when they made this when they made this special release. Okay, that's that's way too much talking after we've already arrived at a conclusion. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the malt activist. Until next time. Peace.